Hi, this is Steve Wagner, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk with you about a classic experiment on leadership that was conducted by Lewin, Lippitt, and White and published in 1939. There's two points to this presentation. The, the first is to discuss the findings of this research and their impact on leadership theory. Um, but also, I'd like to discuss the logic of experiments so that you can uh, understand why people conduct experiments in conducting research on leadership. So Lewin, Lippitt, and White were assessing the effectiveness of different kinds of leadership. And they did this with school-age boys who were meeting after school um, to work on various hobbies. What they did was to break up these uh, boys into different groups and each of those groups was led by uh, a man who adopted one of three different kinds of leadership styles. Autocratic, democratic, or laissez-faire. Leaders who were autocratic took no input from the boys in making decisions about the group activities and did not discuss any kind of long-range goals of the group. What they did was emphasize their authority and dictated who would be working on specific projects. Now, democratic leaders made certain that all the activities were first discussed by the entire group and allowed group members to make their own decisions about work projects or the partners that they were going to work with. Finally, the laissez-faire leaders rarely intervened with the group activities. Groups with this type of leader made all the decisions on their own without any supervision, and there, there really was basically a lack of leadership. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the logic of an experiment within the frame of this study done by Lewin, Lippitt, and White. And one of the big things I'd like to emphasize here is that experiments are useful because they can help us to address cause and effect kinds of questions. They can do that because the researcher has a lot of control over the uh, research setting. So we start out an experiment with a sample. And so here we had a sample of school-age children, 10, 11 years old. Uh, what we want to do is compare their reactions to different contexts. In this case, the context is the type of leadership that they're exposed to. Now we have to understand that when we're doing research on people that people come with baggage. Uh, they come with different personalities. They come uh, with different life experiences. They come with uh, different uh, genetic makeup. That can cause us to have doubt about the findings of our experiments if maybe groups were different because of who was in those groups rather than the experimental context that that we've created um, such as the type of leadership style that we've created what we try and do in an experiment as best we can is to create equal groups to compare. So there isn't some group where participants are more intelligent or have more experience or any kind of characteristic that might bias our results. Now there's two ways that we can create equal groups. Uh, one way is through random assignment. Is that we just draw lots or in this day and age use a computer to randomly assign a person to one of the conditions. And that's the best way to, to create equal groups, especially if you have a, a large sample 
that you're going to spread out across your conditions. Another way that we can do this is through a process of matching so that we try and uh, have an equal number of uh, people with different characteristics in each of the three categories. So maybe we're concerned with birth order and that we don't want too many firstborns in one group because uh, firstborn children react differently than uh, the youngest born children. So we might assess these characteristics that we might think bias our results and make sure that those characteristics are equally present in the three conditions. Now the conditions that we've set up are our independent variable. And this is what, as uh, a researcher, we are manipulating. In, in the case of Lewin, Lippitt, and White, they were manipulating the leadership style that the men directing these groups of school-age uh, children um, were exposed to. Again, some uh, were exposed to an autocratic leader, some to a democratic leader, and others to a laissez-faire leader. Okay? When we're thinking about uh, cause and effect, okay, and that's usually why we do an experiment, the independent variable is what we think of as the cause. Now, what we would like in the best experiment, the ideal experiment, is for the only thing that differs across those groups that we're comparing is the independent variable, the type of leadership that they're exposed to in this case. And what we would like is that for all other variables, what we think of as extraneous variables, for those to be constant or equal across the three conditions. If we do that, then we can isolate down to only one cause of the reactions of the people in our experiment. If everything is equal except for the type of leadership that they're exposed to, and the groups of people react differently, then it must be because of the type of leadership that they've been exposed to, because everything else is equal or constant across the three groups. The effect in the cause and effect equation is what we consider the dependent variable. Okay, these are things that are measured. Uh, in the case of Lewin, Lippitt, and White, they were observing the behavior of the children in these groups. And they looked at their productivity in terms of how they worked in groups on their hobbies. But they also looked at their, what I would call, civility. They talked about aggressiveness in this, but they were basically looking at, were these children civil to one another in their interpersonal interactions? So again, the dependent variable depends upon the independent variable. It is the effect that is caused by the independent variable. So what did Lewin, Lippitt, and White find? The yellow bar represents the autocratic leader groups. The burgundy bar represents the democratic leader groups. And the blue bar represents the laissez-faire leader groups. We can see that if we just look at the time spent on work, that uh, the most productive of those groups was the autocratic leader groups. Maybe that's surprising, maybe it isn't. But if you've got someone who's watching you carefully and telling you exactly what to do, it seems like it might make sense that the autocratic leader groups were the most productive. Now, they weren't much more productive than the democratic leader group, but they were certainly, both of those groups were much more productive than the laissez-faire leader group. What's really interesting is the uh, next one up there, when we look at the time spent on work when the leader is absent. And here we see that the productivity of uh, the group with the autocratic leader steeply declined. 
and the productivity of the Democratic group was about constant, and the laissez-faire leader group uh, increased sharply. While you know you might get the most productivity by being an autocratic leader while you're there, in your absence you can expect a steep decline. And, and when I see this finding, it makes me think of the old saying is that when the cat is away, the mouse will play. Okay. So next we get into more of the civility things and we see that um, the, with the autocratic leader that children were much more leader dependent. They were much more critical in their discontent and they demanded much more attention than what we saw in either the Democratic or the laissez-faire groups. We also saw a, a pattern of less friendliness in the uh, autocratic group, and, and clearly the, there was the most friendliness exhibited by these boys when they were uh, part of a group that had a Democratic leader. So some interesting findings. I think that's the main reason that this is uh, such an influential study. So there are some critiques of this study, and one is that it's not a true experiment. And some people would say that for something to be a true experiment, there has to be random assignment. Now, they didn't use random assignment, but they did try and create equal groups through a matching process. Um, and so there was that attempt to, to have groups that were equal. Um, the study has also been criticized because the extraneous variables were not tightly controlled. All of the other uh, conditions that the boys were exposed to outside of the leadership style um, weren't necessarily exactly equal. But this is something that happens when you do research in a real setting. Okay, it's really only possible to really tightly control extraneous variables when we've got a very artificial setting where we've got total control. Okay, so there's always this tension between having a strong cause and effect conclusion and uh, having a realistic setting in which your research is taking place. Uh, there is without doubt uh, that this is a highly influential study and we, we look and continue to look at modern leadership theories. We see a lot of focus on the sharing of leadership and the participa uh, participation of followers. And the study by Lewin, Lippitt, and White was really a trend-setting study that uh, helped us to understand the value of shared leadership and participation in groups. So if you'd like to, to read this study uh, for yourself, uh, here's the reference for it. And I hope you found uh, this to be a, a useful presentation. Thank you.